Hey guys, I'm here with Edwin. Uh, Edwin has a YouTube channel. Do yep. you want to go ahead and yeah. give yourself a plug? I'm Edwin the Magic Engineer, and uh, I have a YouTube channel that I started a little over a year ago. It's mostly focused on what all my hobbies are, but uh, most of the videos don't get very many views except for <laughs> Magic the Gathering videos. So that's what I've been focusing on mostly lately, and of Magic the Gathering, I've been focusing primarily on old school because I've been very passionate about it. And so uh, MTG Line and I have been actually talking a lot about old school stuff, and I brought these packs for us to open so today. today. We actually opened two legend packs. I think that'll be on your channel. That'll be in my channel. So I'll have a link to your channel to see. I think we did very well. Although I think so. We did have some questions at the end about a yep. certain card. Yep. Um, but which yeah. one's the rare? Which is easy to do with legends. But I think we, it, that's why I love uncommons. I was trying, trying to say. I always say this is I don't like mythics having all the value, mm -hmm. and I especially don't like um, when you have like one chase mythic and the rest of it is like crap. Yeah. But in legends, you can get a hundred forty dollar uncommon. Yeah, that's which is definitely fantastic amazing. because it's more likely you're going to get the uncommon than anything else. Yeah, like the Mana Drain or the Caracas, mm -hmm, one of those mm -hmm. really good uncommons that's there in Legends, and there's so many rares in Legends. Or, you know, the, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, all the one that you got. Mm -hmm. Like, you were surprised at the price, I'm not, because I, I'm actually price watching them now. Yeah. So, um, let's talk a little bit about content creation. So okay. you have, right now, I'm subbed, and you have about 3,000 subscribers. How do you right. get there? Um, I know you do a lot of uh, videos. I've seen a video right. with you, Rudy, or right. Daniel. Um, so I started off just kind of sweeping the board of all my hobbies because I one of my problems that also is one of my greatest strengths is I have a ton of hobbies. I, I play guitar, I race radio control cars. I um, actually used to design high-end gaming motherboards for Intel, and as a result, they would always give me these motherboards and these processes. Like arcade games, or no, the no, the motherboards themselves. I would oh, actually design for your like, computer system. Okay. Right. So since I would help Intel design the, the actual motherboard and write the BIOS for it, they would give me them all these motherboards. So I have like seven gamer computers at my house, so I'd have a lot of LAN parties and stuff. That's a big hobby. And I got into finance a few years ago, and of course Magic the Gathering has been there just for quite a long time. So my channel started out kind of going across all my favorite hobbies, <clears throat> but the only ones, the videos that really seemed to take off uh, was mostly the Magic. I had one cool thing happen with finance where I was like, breaking down how government finance works and stuff, and I, I connected with another guy named Gregory Manorino, who's a stock trader, and he has his own uh, YouTube channel. And he actually reposted my finance videos on his channel. And those yeah, that got, will help. Those that got will thousands help. of views and that took off, but the Magic guys don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, so, MTG Finance people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's mostly been Magic. And so it, what's, what's interesting is Daniel Chang, who owns Vintage Magic, he's actually the one that got me to do a YouTube channel because we got to know each other when uh, we were like, I was buying some cards from him. And he kept encouraging me to put a YouTube channel up after talking to me for a while and getting to know me because he thought I had some interesting things to say. So it was basically through Daniel egging me on, I finally made a channel. And of course I made a lot of like Magic the Gathering based videos. And they started actually taking off, people seemed to enjoy them. And through Daniel I got to know some of these other guys. And after getting to know some of these other guys like Rudy and Open Boosters and everyone else, then you know that started to kind of take on its life of its own. And there was another big change that I think just happened because, I like like you said, I had about 3,000 viewers when I yeah. hit GP Vegas. <clears throat> but people knew me through like deck techs, they knew me through my finance videos, things like that. But I actually placed second in the old school championship against like guys. So now like, you're like a verified expert kind yeah. of uh, in old school. Yeah, people could, people kept telling me the entire weekend like that actually kind of validated. Maybe if we had you. some time, I would love to show off your deck in sure. a different video because sure. that is uh, it's a what's a twenty five thousand dollar deck. Well, that's probably the low end side. It might be up to like forty thousand <laughs> now. Oh yeah, yeah, we're all good. The price yeah. of a nice, you know, uh, SUV. Yeah, so it was basically through Daniel to egg me on to start the channel, and then he introduced me to many other people, and now it's just kind of taken on a life of its own. And so now I got to meet you. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad that you. Uh, we were able to meet before you're yeah. you know, going to Florida. Me too. Um, that would be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, me to, too. You know, I love these packs, and it's been a long. time. I have not opened any of these actually. You've never opened. I've any never opened these. this. Well, I've opened us. a bunch <laughs> of legends before. Uh huh. Um, but I never saw these. Well, uh -huh. when I saw them, I never bought them because they were eight cards. Mm -hmm. And they were the same price as 15. Yeah, when you're a little kid, you don't remember what's in it. Yeah. 
They're like, 15. 15. Yeah. Um, well, what advice would you have for like, um, you know, a content creator, like in Magic? Oh, like, I see. What have you learned? Um, the best things that people told me that seemed to really pan out is uh, definitely talk about things that you do know about. Um, yeah. Talk about things that you're passionate about because the internet, man, people on the internet are, pers <laughs> are they're perceptive. If if you don't, that's one way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> that's one way to put there, it. If you don't honestly, earnestly love the things that you're talking about and have a, a, a real passion for it, people will figure that out. And when you're dishonest about oh, it or yeah. disingenuous, oh, yeah. people will call you out all day long. So for me specifically, I really do love this stuff. And it's the same reason why I don't have a Patreon. I don't, nobody pays me for anything because this is all for fun. I have one parrot to run from uh, Australia. Oh, really? And that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. And so I can, I can, after walking around your house, I can definitely tell, no, you really like this stuff. And that translates. And I think it, when you talk about something on a YouTube channel that you know about, you have something interesting to say, you really actually do love it. And then beyond that, I mean, you just kind of have to be an interesting person in general, which you obviously are because you have a big channel. So I think those are the biggest things in terms of making a, a channel. But beyond that, um, people were willing to put up with my bad audio and video. And like as, as you were actually seen, like <laughs> I have real yeah. low budget equipment that I've been doing initially, but as this thing proves itself out and I'm willing to be like, okay, I'll put some money into this. I'm, I'm now buying it's, better it's cameras. It's easier when and, you can make a little bit of money. It doesn't yeah. have to be like a ton, but it's enough that you can see like, oh, okay, I can reinvest in it and exactly. not like, um, it's not just gonna like bankrupt me. It's not yeah, gonna it's not be gonna like another you. thing that yet drains me like like this hobby does, right? <laughs> yeah. So I would love you know a video on the deck really quickly. Um, sure. Oh, do you want to do that now? Yeah, let's go over the deck. Um, okay. Well, I have so, to de sideboard because it's it's for Randy Bueller <laughs> right now. Sideboard. I'll turn the camera, and we can just do a really quick sure. version of the deck. Um, I think sure. that is. I know my subscribers like fancy stuff they cannot buy. Or if forward. you want to pause it, I could actually put the deck, I could stack it all out so the cards are proper. Or uh, we could just, I could just hand it to you as soon as I pull the sideboard out. Uh, I guess, I don't know. Way. Either way it works, I guess. Either way, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, just so when there. did you play? You played on uh, Skype? Yeah, I played Randy Bueller last night over Skype as part of the old school online Facebook group. That's how we meet up, actually. All of us old school. How schoolers. is Skyping? Like, this, that, that seems such, such a. Um, you would try. Oh, you should try. Man. Is Skyping to play. I remember, like, when I was in eighth grade, I did it, right? Yeah, you should try it. You would absolutely love it. Okay, so the Lotus is somewhere. Maybe we already put it back in. So I had taken out, I had taken out a Jet, a Pearl, two. Jane Day Tomes and a Brain Geyser. So the first time I realized old school in. was a format, um, I sent one of my patrons. Um, this is when I had more than one of them. Uh -huh. uh, I sent them an unlimited one of these. Oh, there, yeah, it's in back in the day. And it was like mm -hmm. $80. And I sent him like a bunch. Oh, really? And then he sent them back to me and told me, hey, did you know these are 80 bucks? Uh -huh. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's a very good of him to be that honest. Okay, that's the deck and here's the sideboard. Yeah. You're ready to go. So I'm going to guess, you know, I think they just like looking at nice cards. <laughs> okay. If I had to guess my audience, um, they don't actually want to know how the debt works. Oh, really? They just want to know like, oh, there's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Please guys, check out how the deck works. The cool thing is you how have the this deck on, I assume you have this on your channel. I do. This um, exact deck. Well, What's not put? almost, because I did a deck tech of almost this exact deck. Uh, um, oh, I guess Wheel of Fortune is a yeah. lot of money now. And I changed this deck slightly because so when in. GP Vegas was coming up, I expected the meta to be different. I expected a lot of versions of the deck and powered decks. So I altered this slightly for the meta game that I was expecting. And I actually think that's why I had an edge coming into it. So this is almost like a video that I've had, and I'm going to yeah, do you another can, uh, deck tech. Yeah, put, put a link in it. I, I'm sure to, yeah, put, I'll put a link into the video. Okay. Would you want to blackboarder your dual lands or is that like just too outrageous? Oh, like Sharpie them? Well, no, no, I mean like buy. Oh, oh, you mean upgrade them. Yeah. Oh, Sharpie okay. them, oh my God. That's a really good question, actually. So, Wait, I mean, are you looking, I mean, would you ever even consider it? Like, So the answer, I, I can give you a very solid answer and it's based on my perspective. I care about playing Magic the Gathering first and foremost. So okay. my collection organization is based around playing. My collection itself is based around playing. As a result of that, I want to be able to build any deck in old school that I want. And that means I need to get the expanse of the cards. 
So before I start pimping out my deck, if you will, I want to go make sure I have, you know, Makes the sense. four Nether Voids, the four Abyss, and I have like my one set you of have an Abyss? I have one Abyss now and one Nether Void. I, I used to have all these cards, but I sold them and now I'm rebuying back in. So I'm paying the same price as you guys are to buy back into this stuff. And that's what is um, interesting. Oh, here's the Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Is that Rudy, you, they're yeah. still buying into it. Absolutely. So I, I, that's what like really caught my attention is when he made that video. Yeah. And he was still buying into Dual Lands. I was like, yes. Well, if it was really like a pump and dump, wouldn't this guy be trying to Rudy sell? Doesn't, Rudy doesn't Dual sell. Rudy sells new cards. He does not sell right, his old right. cards. In and fact, I offered him money. Like he went around the floor of GP Vegas and bought some cards. You told me a very, oh, here's your Black Lotus. Yeah, there's the Lotus. It's a beautiful Lotus. Thank you. So there was a couple cards that Rudy bought, and I was like, oh my gosh, you got it for that price? Oh, I'll pay you double. And he wouldn't sell it. <laughs> pay you double. Rudy doesn't sell cards, at least Whoa. old school cards. Yeah, that's my Ruby. Beta Ruby, right? Yep, that's a Beta Ruby. Yeah. All my Moxes except for my Pearl are Beta. <laughs> my Pearl is unlimited. And do you ever change like the sleeves and stuff? Oh, or? constantly. Okay, yeah, yeah I figured I, so. I ruffle shuffle these cards. I, I shuffle them constantly, yeah. And yeah, the sleeves get changed up. I do double sleeve though. Ever since uh, the professor at Tulare Community College, thank you professor for making that video about double sleeves. When you held that card underwater, I was like, okay, <laughs> I need to do that with mine. Cause I was always afraid of spilling a drink or something on my actual deck. This is an awesome deck. So yeah, these are all double sleeved and I, of course, I, awesome since I play deck. constantly, I have to change out the sleeves all the time. Oh, sideboard. Okay, I have this. So is this card valuable? Um, well, I have like hundreds of these. It's not going up in value a ton yet. <laughs> okay. It will though. It, it will. will. Yeah, the original uh, print Energy Flux. Energy sure. Flux, yeah. It's a common, right? Uh, I think it's a non-common, I think. Okay, I, I just know that I have, oh, these are the proxies. Yeah, Which I have three proxies. Okay. They're actually in the mail. Um, when I did GP Vegas, uh, Brian Weissman actually told me I should do Concord and Crossroads in the sideboard. So I bought them, but GP Vegas was only like a few days ago and they haven't arrived yet. So Wait, I've so got... you bought them at GP Vegas? No, I bought them on TCG Player oh, okay. while I was at GP Vegas. I was like, Vegas. okay, why didn't they just let you take it home? Yeah. I um, should have bought some at GP Vegas, but I didn't realize that their price had just spiked, so I passed yeah. on them. All right, do you want to open? Yeah. Yeah, do so, you want to do the first one again? Yeah, I'll do the first one. Um, I have never opened one of these before, uh, so it is... Gotta be careful with that. I like how they, um, how you open like older packs. You don't like open uh -huh. it straight down. Uh huh. And then you can kind of keep the booster wrapping if you wanted to. Now, by the way, I have no idea where the rare is going to be in here. So I don't know either. Um, but we're just going to find out. We're going to find <laughs> out. Staff of. Oh, here's a Tog. Oh, I love Atog. That Tog has got to be worth a tiny bit of money now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going up. He's, I actually play him, uh, well, I, I haven't revealed it yet. Um, uh, he, Ooh, he gets this, this is like a, I, I know that this card is worth money. It's Urza yes. power, power Plant. I'd say 15 bucks each right no, now. No, I think it's worth more. I think they're going to go to 100 they, bucks each. I think they are worth way more than that. Reverse Polarity, I'm pretty sure this is an uncommon. Yeah, I think you're right. So I think we have a rare left. I, uh, is that the rare? I don't think so. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, Triskeleton. Yeah. So, um, how much is this card worth? It's seems today, play, right? Like, I think they might be 40, 50 bucks today. Because it has a, I know cool. that even in um, ED8s, this is worth a lot because yep. it's got the infinite combo. On it. Yep. And so. you can actually use uh, Tano's Coffin with that. And when you bring them back out with Tano's Coffin, he gets the counters again and you can throw the counters at people again. Oh, so these were our four, co our four commons. This is a rare, and I'm guessing these were the uncommons. I think you're right. Uh, do you want to grab some sleeves? I'll put the. Sure. So I, I'm, I'm almost certain that you're undervaluing this card, the power plant, because I know strip mine. The power, the power is, plant. Yeah, strip mine is definitely way up. It's like a hundred to three hundred, but the power, the Urza's lands. I just checked. I think at this second they're like fifteen each, but but they're not going to stay there long. No, they're not. Because strip mine, right? Yeah. So I'm actually really happy about this Triskelion because I didn't have. I don't think I only had one antiquities. The rest of mine were revised, I think, and now I've actually got another. This is a good. Piece. It's a good card. It's got infinite combo. Yep. All right, do you want to open your pack? Okay. So the next pack of antiquities. <laughs> Let's hope for a candelabra. Yeah, I've never opened one of these. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. No problem. I've, been, I, I've opened a ton of legends. I just never thought when I was a little kid uh -huh. to buy these eight card packs. <laughs> it's kind of like those uh, packs, like the Pokemon packs at the dollar store. They come uh -huh. with like five. It's like, why would anyone pay four dollars for that? 
Yeah. Let me get my full 15 cards. Um, it also didn't help that Fallen Empires was also like eight cards or something, right? I think so. Was it Fallen Empires? And that, so. that was a terrible set. And you know, Homelands was eight cards too. Yeah, right? like any time that I think eight cards, I was like, oh man. Yeah, this is packed a ripoff. But I did buy lots of Homelands. <laughs> As many of you will know. Okay. Here we go, and right there on the oh, front. Oh, that's a good one. Hers is mine. So we have a uh, power plant. What's the tower is the expensive Power's one? The last tower one. is the expensive. Tower is oh, the one that produces. We were just three. talking about this. Yeah, the Argothian Pixie, Pixies. Which is in your deck. Yeah, this is actually in my old school deck that I just played. And so artifact ward. I'm guessing these are uncommons, right? No. That's so uh, weird. You know I'm so unfamiliar with it. Because I've never sure. opened these yeah, before. I'm not, I'm not sure, because these are uncommons, I'm pretty. So artifact ward and Atog. Oh nice. And a clay statue. And a draft nose restoration. Okay. And a goblin artisans. And a centennial druid. That's the rare. The the druid is? You know what? I actually I had yes. a druid. This is a pricey card now. So I had a druid in my deck at GP Vegas. The, this is one of my tech things that I played. And I just rotated it out based on Brian Weissman's. Did it say paused? No, it says portrait on your camera. Oh, I it's still recording? <laughs> okay, I think yeah. it's still recording. Okay, so I actually rotated the druids out based on the advice of Brian Weissman, and I put in um, the Argothian Pixies, and I, I left the Scavenger Folk in, but then I also put Suchi in, and I took out the Urnams. Yeah, I think, it, I think this is card is worth money, right? Yeah. No, I'm it's, pretty it's, sure it is, because... The, the, these are all playable in old school. All four of these definitely see play. The Druids, the Pixies, the Atog, and the Urzatron lands. I mean, I just love it. It's so, it's so, um, for such old cards, they're uh -huh. so clean. They are. So, do you want to keep the packs? Yeah, I think I'll keep the packs. Okay. If you don't mind. That's fine. Like, uh, that is crazy. It's, okay. I mean, I have Legends, right? Um, do you want them or no? Um, I have one more Italian Legends, and actually, uh, let me keep one Antiquities. Yes. Because I don't, I don't have an Antiquities pack. So. I've never opened one of these before, so it's really great to uh, be able to keep the pack. I don't know, anything else before we... Uh... Um, I'd love to actually have you sign my playmat. Oh, great, great. Do you have a Sharpie somewhere? <laughs> no, no. I have to look. I think I'll close off this. Okay. So, bye everybody. I'll have links to uh, the deck. Uh, I think that's what they want to look at, the deck. Um, the deck. And the, if you have a video of it. I will. Very soon I'll do a deck tech video. And I'll link to your deck. channel as well. All right, okay. bye guys. Bye.